And we have another inhomogeneous uh, ordinary differential equation in front of us, which is uh, the second derivative of y plus y equal to sine 2x. And we have a couple of uh, initial value conditions as well. So as always, first of all, we want the solution to the corresponding homogeneous case. And for that, we have to write its characteristic equation, which is d squared plus 1 equal to 0. And this implies that d equals positive and negative iota. We know that in the case of imaginary solutions to the uh, uh, characteristic equation, the characteristic solution y sub c can be written as e to the ax times uh, some constant c1 times cos bx plus a, another constant c2 times sine bx. And where a is the real part of the uh, solution, and we see that the real parts of the solutions are 0. So e to the 0x is just 1, right? And b here is the modulus of the imaginary part. So we know that the modulus of iota uh, is 1 anyway. So uh, e to the ax, oh, sorry about that, that was 1. So we have c1 times cos b equals 1. So cos x plus c2 times sine x. And that is your characteristic solution. And now we are out to find the particular solution. The structure of your particular solution can be deciphered by looking at the right-hand side of the given inhomogeneous differential equation. So the right-hand side is a sine to x function. So we understand that the particular solution should contain uh, trig functions. So the most general case would be some constant a that we have to determine times the sine of 2x plus uh, some, uh, some other constant b times the cosine of 2x. But uh, hear me out. There is uh, one trick that you can use over here. Uh, because this is a special case where you're missing the first derivative, you see that your differential equation does not have the first derivative term. So under such circumstances, you can omit one of these two trig ratios. And because you have a sine function here, you can just stick with the sine function and omit the cosine function. And in case you're wondering why, well, the reason is pretty simple. Look, in case you have a sine function, the second derivative uh, and the first derivatives, uh, the first derivative is going to be a 2a times a sine of 2x. And the second derivative, oh, sorry about that, math glitch. So the first derivative is 2a times co cosine of 2x, and the second derivative is going to be negative 2a, uh, 4a, that is negative 4a times the sine of 2x. And your differential equation does not contain the uh, first derivative term anywhere. So it doesn't contain the first derivative, and I see no other signs of a cosine function uh, here in the equation. So we don't need the cosine term. We don't need the cosine term because uh, you have y as a sine function and you have y, uh, y double prime, the second derivative, which is once again a sine function. And the right-hand side is a sine function too. So there is no chance of getting a cosine anywhere because you're missing the first derivative. So you can just take this simplified structure and if you want, if you want, if you're having doubts about it, then you could take the cosine term as well, but you'll find out that the solutions are going to be exactly the same. So let me just solve it using this structure for the particular solution. So y sub p equals a times the sine of 2x, and the differential equation was y double prime plus um, y prime uh, plus y equal to sine 2x. So up there, we worked out the first and second derivatives. The second derivative was negative 4a times the sine of 2x. And the function is just a times sine 2x. And that equals sine 2x as well. So we see that the uh, left-hand side reduces to negative 3a times sine 2x equal to sine 2x, which implies by the comparison of coefficients that negative 3a equals 1 or a equals negative 1 by 3. So now we have the uh, particular solution that is y sub p equals negative 1 by 3 times the sine of 2x. 
So our complete solution, the uh, complete solution is going to be the characteristic one, which was, uh, I remember, C1 cos x, or did I write it as a C1 sin x? Whatever. C2 sin x minus one third of the sine of 2x. Now, all that's left to do is determine the uh, constants C1, C2. And we can do that since we're given the initial conditions of y of pi by 2 equal to 0 and y prime pi by 2 equal to 0 as well. So I'm going to have to take the derivative of this uh, y function here. Negative C1 sine x plus C2 cosine x and then a minus 2 thirds cosine 2x. So now to plug in the values where x equals pi by 2 and y equals 0. So yeah, this should cross out to 0 and this should be c2. And here I should have sine of pi, which is 0 again. So c2 equals 0, which is cool because I can now cancel it out. I don't have to worry about it. And y prime at when x equals pi by 2 is also 0. So 0 equals negative c1 minus uh, two-thirds of the cosine of pi is negative one. Hence, we have here that c1 equals two by three, and our solution to the differential equation is uh, two-thirds of, I think this was the uh, cosine, yeah, the cosine of x, and c2 was zero anyway, then minus one-third, one-third of sine two x. So there you have it, that's the solution to the differential equation. And now one more problem, which is uh, one step more complicated. Well, it's not exactly too complicated at all. And the things about the characteristic equation, blah, 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 are exactly the same. So the same process involved over there. And for the particular solution, again, you have to uh, look at the structure of the right-hand side. So we have uh, we have an exponential term. We have an exponential term, so we can write this as the required term e to the negative x. And uh, instead of writing a constant or coefficient next to it, I can assume that co I can assume that constant or coefficient to be multiplied inside the brackets to give me new constants a and b, where a is uh, something multiplied by sine two x and b is something multiplied by the cosine of 2x, and that should cut it. So that's the uh, particular solution that you're going to need for solving this differential equation, and I'm not going to solve it. I'm going to leave it to you because it's trivial. So uh, I hope you found the video useful. Thank you. I'll see you next time.